Hello YouTube, this is Salam. In this video, I'm going to talk about the hydraulic cylinders of this 1969 International Bulldozer. I bought this bulldozer in 2013. It needed a lot of repairs. And I restored it. It took me about a year to do everything. Hydraulic cylinders, some repair to the engine, and I did all the undercarriage. And I have a playlist on YouTube showing the whole process. If you're interested, please watch it. Since I did the restoration, I put over a thousand hours on this bulldozer. I dug two ponds and I cleared some fence line and I till some ground with it. So I've been using it. Now I need to use it to build a shop and build a road to get to the country road. And the hydraulic cylinders, especially these four ones, they leak. I restore the original one, the one that do the lift. I had to repair one of them because when I tried to lose the nut, the thread got messed up. I welded it, remachined it and all that. Like I said, I have videos showing that. And these, they start leaking now. The original swing cylinders that swing the blade this way, they were in bad shape. I couldn't repair them. The rods, they were bent, and the cylinders itself or the or this part, it was messed up. When I tried to lose the nuts, they got damaged, or they may were damaged originally. The previous owner welded rivers on both sides, and they were using this bulldozer to rip the ground, and this put a lot of stress on the original cylinders, and they were in bad shape, so I couldn't repair them. I looked online, and I called many junkyards. The cheapest I could find these cylinders, each one will cost $1,200 used. And I really didn't want to buy a used part for that price, just in case there is an issue with them. So I start looking for alternative. I found the same specification cylinders on eBay, inch and a half, rod, a three inch bore, 14 inch stroke. That's the specification of the original one. And these, they match that. I bought them, and I end up cutting the original attachment of the cylinder, and I cut the one from the original cylinders, and I welded them to these two cylinders. And they work perfect. They just start leaking this year, 2022. I have this plastic container under the cylinder to collect as most of the leaks because once I open this port it will start leaking. When I restore the bulldozer I ran in new hoses for everything and I used hose clamp to clamp these hoses so they don't get in the way and they don't get damaged. This hose clamp is damaged. I'm going to replace it. Very important tip, before you do similar work, wash your machine. This way you prevent contaminant from get inside and also you stay clean. I'm going to lose these hoses and I will tie wrap them higher than the hydraulic reservoir to minimize the leak. And I will also protect them because they're probably going to take me a week to find the right seals for these cylinders. I raise the blade and I have a barrel underneath it and I put a block of wood so I could work on this because if the blade all the way down then I have to remove these cylinders completely. But this way I could remove them from here, swing them this way and disassemble them. And now I have to remove this pin.
Before I pull this pin completely out, while it's supported on the blade and on the frame of the bulldozer, I located the right bolt to fit this hole. This flange has a hole over here, it's quarter inch, and I'm using quarter 20 bolt. It fitted perfectly, and I'm going to use the pipe wrench so it will bite on the bolt. This way, this, the teeth of the pipe wrench will not damage this flange. I have this longer quarter 20 bolt. It came out of a spool for wire. Some spray lubricant. Typical hydraulic cylinder, it has the guide to prevent metal from rubbing on each other. This part and the inside of the bore, and this is the seal, the red one. Now I have to remove this nut to extract the piston to be able to pull this out and see what kind of seal they have inside. There is an o-ring inside the piston to prevent internal leak. I will replace this as well. I removed the two wipers and two seals out of these glands. There is a lot of rust inside. I'm going to clean it so when I take these to the seal and ring place, they could take accurate measurement and give me the right match of wipers, seals, and o-rings for these two glands and the two pistons. The rubber was so brittle, it fell apart when I tried to extract the wipers and the seals. Amazingly, these two hydraulic cylinders didn't leak worse than they did.
all the parts clean and dry I am going to apply some silicone for the wiper to prevent rust inch and a half by inch and seven eight a three sixteen thick a premium urethane dy bar ribbed heel I bought extra, I bought four, so I'll have a spare seals in case these uh, go bad. The internal seal, it's inch and a half by inch and three quarter by quarter inch. Urethane, a twin lip, rod, U, C, U, P. The lip need to go to the inside. It will face the inside.
the inside o-ring 0.987 id by 0.103 diameter or a cross-sectional cut and it's o-ring nitrile 70 The guides for these pistons, a 3 inch OD, quarter inch wide by 8 inch thick, and they are nylon wear rings. These rings, they just to prevent the piston from rubbing inside the bore of the cylinder. The piston seal, the one that prevent internal leak from the outside, it's a 3 inch by 0 0.271 inch by 0 0.090, it's two piece polyester piston seal with NBR EXP. You'll put the rubber first. Make sure the seat is square. The o-ring that sits over here, it's 2.987 ID by 0 0.103 thickness, and it's nitrile 70. This seal, it's two part. It has a flat o-ring. It's two and a three quarter of inch by three inch urethane backup. And this will go first. And the o-ring, 
it's 2.734 id by 0 0.139 thickness and it's nitrile 70. I removed these cylinders from the machine, I cleaned them with diesel, and I inspected the inside, and there was some minor rust inside the bore. I polished them. The way I done it, I took this piece of EMT, or electrical conduit, and I taped rags at both ends, and then I put 220 grit sandpaper, and I taped it using duct tape, and 2000 grit sandpaper, and I also taped it with duct tape. And then I polished it with the 220 grit sandpaper all the way. And then I finished it with the 2000. I spent more time with the 2000 until I got smooth and mirror finish inside. Then I cleaned it again with diesel, blew it with air, spray it with carburetor cleaner, blew it with air. They clean and dry, and now I'm ready to assemble everything. I built this one when I restored this bulldozer. I used it twice. The first time I got stuck with the tractor, and this worked out great, and this is the second time. I use it to loosen the nut over here, and now I'm going to use it to tie the piston. Hopefully in the future, I will build a disc or something, and I will use this to drag uh, the implement with this bulldozer. I'm just applying some grease so I could fit this easy.
I'm applying the grease. I am going to apply a grease to these o-rings and then I will put some anti-seize at the end. When I restored this bulldozer about eight years ago, the bushings that goes here, they were damaged. And I made those out of old shaft. I was able to harden them after I machine them. And they work out great. They're still in good shape. I will get the machine running and lower it and then put this washer. I protected the hoses to prevent water or bugs or anything get inside. I know which one which, but if you uh, if you're not sure, mark these hoses before you remove them. This way you could put them back right. I will use the new hose clamps. And now I'm ready to do the same thing to the other side.
It worked out great. There is no leak. It was very easy to rebuild these two cylinders. It cost me about $80. In the next video, I'll show you how I'm going to repair the lift cylinders on both sides. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your support, and I'll see you later.